All right, everyone, welcome. So what this is going to be, this is going to be your background knowledge on fibers and kind of how we look at fibers from a forensic standpoint and exactly what do fibers tell us in a crime scene. One of the best ways to describe fibers is using this quote, and I always like to start out with it, and it says, wherever he steps, whatever he touches, whatever he leaves, even unconsciously, will serve as silent witness against him, not only his fingerprints or his footprints, but his hair, the fibers from his clothes, the glass he breaks, the tool marks he leaves, the paint he scratches, the blood or semen he deposits or collects, all of these will bear mute witness against him. This is evidence that does not forget. Fibers are part of one of the like key types of evidence that people usually go and they just kind of ignore of they don't really understand what exactly it is or how we can tell through fibers but it is a key piece of evidence that we need to look at forensically to try to determine just again crimes who did those crimes in different natures so let's start out first off fibers you have a couple of things F fibers really are circumstantial evidence of it's used to link between victim, crime, and location, and not so much like individual evidence of saying because you have it here, then you have this. Of With fibers, again, they're class. It's not going to be able to say, like think of the Nairings Hall like carpet itself. Everyone lays on that thing. You probably have fibers from that carpet at some point in time on your person and there's 600 or so Naring students but that doesn't mean that immediately everyone is tied to Naring's for fibers kind of idea and then finally fibers really are an important important piece of evidence in order to determine the intrinsic and probative value now fibers my goal today is to prepare you for your lab and your lab is going to be, again, microscopes and microscopic analysis and burn tests and chemical tests to try to determine the identity of fibers. That's the main thing. So let's go over a couple of different types of fibers. Of, as a recap, you have to go and you have to characterize fibers on both physical and chemical types. Of, they're stupid common. At almost any type, like think back to your low cards lab. With your low cards lab, you went and more than likely you tried to determine, and any time that you did a tape lift for it, you have to determine between pieces of evidence, the fiber on your clothes, the fiber your clothes are made out of, if you picked up fibers elsewhere, anything of the sort. So let's start out. You need to know some terminology. Fabric is fibers. Fibers are made of filaments. So it's really like, you know, triangle based of you go from fabric, fibers, filaments, if you're getting smaller on that, you know, just triangle. Now, there's two different types of fibers. You are either going to have a natural fiber or you are going to have a synthetic fiber. That's it. Natural fibers, you can tell almost immediately because, again, you're trying to look for certain things as opposed to a synthesis or a synthetic fiber. Then again, you can see it almost immediately, depending on what you are looking for. Let's start out with natural. Uh, natural fibers are grouped then into three. So you have synthetic, natural, three different types of natural. And those are vegetable or cellulose fibers. Those are animal fibers and mineral fibers. And you're going, you're like, mineral fibers? What the? Yeah, we'll get there. First off, animal fibers are exactly like what you see over on the side. They are more, well, not animal fibers, we'll get there, but your most common type of fiber immediately is going to be cotton. Almost everything across the board is made out of cotton. So you go and take a look at what you're wearing currently, more than likely it has a tag, look at the back of the tag, it probably says like 95% cotton. And you're like, oh, well, that's, a, no, it's not actually made out of pure cotton more than likely your clothing is made out of rayon but they describe it and they list it as cotton because people don't like the idea of rayon but rayon is cotton then that has been treated to make it stronger more durable things of you know again just trying to improve how cotton is made and what exactly cotton's purpose is 
So you have cotton, by far the most common fiber in the entire world, and then you have rayon, which is just chemically treated cotton. If you look at the two for just comparison under the microscope, do you notice how cotton natural fibers will start to look almost twisted and not at all kind of descriptive as to what you have? So cotton, you can see over on the side here, is very, very twisted up. It's going and it's moving from side to side. It's very natural looking, as opposed to rayon has been chemically altered to try to determine, to try to improve, you know, the strength, the durability. And because of that, it will have these really, really telltale, they can be twisted still. You can still see like over on the side here that there are going to be some bends, there's going to be some twists, but notice how straight in comparison it is. So this is just what you're going to find across the board. As we keep on going, animal fibers you've already done with, like dealt with. Theoretically, animal fibers are hair. You'll go and you'll learn that animal fibers, if you look like at a wool or a piece of wool, it will have a medulla inside of it. And you can tell immediately what an animal fiber is. The most common animal fiber is wool across the board. But a lot of my students immediately think that wool only comes from sheep. But no, wool is the broad classification of the outer coat of just any type of animal. So you have, again, goat, which is called mohair, sheep, rabbit, angora, camel, alpaca, llama, vicuna, anything of the sort that is the outer, like, shed, you know, of an animal, we classify as wool. As opposed to, like, silk, again, silk, you know what a silk thread is, it's spun from silk worms, and we go and we make a very, very high class, you know, type of fiber because of it. Then, mineral fibers, there's two. Well, two that you know of, I'll say. The number one that you are always going to hear about is asbestos. And asbestos is a mineral fiber. It is a literally mined from the ground. And we use it to treat for fire protection. The lab tables in chemistry are made out of asbestos. I haven't been told, but I'm like 95% sure the reason why Nerings hasn't gotten rid of the carpet in the halls is because we have asbestos underneath. It was used like mad because it has a very, very inherent fire resistance. So the lab tables, they're made out of asbestos, then we cover them, and you have a natural fiber, and it works out well. As long as you are not actively breathing in asbestos, it does no harm to you. So asbestos is a mineral fiber, as opposed to like fiberglass is inorganic. You don't mine fiberglass but it is a different type of mineral fiber. Let's keep on going into synthetic fibers. Oh my gosh. Synthetic fibers, they're made out of gasoline. They're made out of petroleum. And you have tons of different types. By far, the most popular is polyester. Of You'll have lots and lots, like, I think, uh, what, t-shirts, jerseys, of anything of the sort is made out of polyester just because again it's cheap it's durable but you have things like nylon acrylic spandex depending on what you have and we'll look through all of these now the way in which they make synthetics is that they first have to make polymers uh, a polymer is literally a repeating chemical chain that turns into these really really nice strands and because of these strands, we can go and, based off their chemical composition, determine whether or not they are this polymer or this polymer. And we do that by treating them with chemicals. Now, with polymers and with fibers in general, you also not only have to worry about the fibers themselves, but how they are arranged. Of If you're trying to place a certain fabric, remember fibers, fabrics, fabric at a crime scene, then you have to go and you have to go through and say, what are all the different types of fabrics that this could be? If I found a piece of, like, say, my shirt, then how do I know that it came from me? 
that sort of instance. And you can't just look at the chemical or the composition of it. You have to figure out the orientation of it as well. So we look at the weave, which is just the overall. And the weave is based off of the warp and the weft. And the warp are the verticals. The weft is the side to side. So you're going to go, and it's just how fibers are arranged to create clothing, to create, you know, the carpet, to create jackets, to create whatever in the world you need in order to make that fiber more durable. So you have lots and lots of different terminology. There's three different types of weaves that I want you to know. It is called a plain weave, a satin weave, and a twill. And I always feel so, like, fancy whenever I'm saying these because, again, you're going... And I want you to look for certain types of patterns with these fibers. So let's start out. Plain weave, almost everything that you see is a plain weave. Look at your shirt, look at your pants. Really, really go in close and look at those fibers and see how those fibers are oriented. Of A plain weave is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And it's just repeated time after time after time. Then you get into a twill weave. A twill weave is like a little bit more fancy because it's a one to three ratio. So it's the shuttle itself, if you've ever seen like a loom, goes over and then like under three. So over one, under three, over one, under three, and you'll get this diagonal pattern. Now, mind you, as we go further, like plain weave is used across the board. Like it does not matter. Twill weave, you're getting a little bit fancier. It costs more money to produce a twill weave. But I want you to try to find something at your house that has a twill weave. I say that denim is usually one of the most common types of, you'll get like some dress shirts. I think a lot of my polos have like a twill weave for them. Of actually, I don't know how old your skirts are. They went and they cheaped out on your nearing skirts recently, just by the way. Of it used to be a twill weave. And it was class, you know, again, classified a little bit fancier, a little bit nicer, but no, your skirts nowadays are just plain. But find something that has a twill weave. Then in the end, I don't know if you're gonna be able to, but try to find something that has a satin weave really go through and try to find like nice clothing that has a really really nice pretty satin weave is like way up there but more than likely like really nice dresses my dress shirts sometimes depending on the brand will have a satin weave with them and this is just kind of i don't know it's like progression of order that you get in order to determine the correct type but we have to take everything new into account now, let me ask you, the one that you forget is always the ones like, oh, well, Q went and knitted me this really, really nice scarf, and scarfs or knitting, you can tell immediately. It's loops that interlock each other as opposed to, like, squares that interlock each other because it's just a different type of technology. So if you have something knitted or something hand-created that is not on, like, a loom, it's going to have loops just over and over. Same thing with crochet, whatever in the world you have. Now, to test for fibers, the first thing that you go to is you go through a microscopic observation. You want to see the weave pattern. You want to see whether or not that fiber has a medulla to classify it as animal, or if it is twisted to classify it as natural. Is it still somewhat twisted but straightened to classify it as rayon? That's usually our first go-to, which you're going to do in a lab, and it's going to probably take you about 20 minutes. After we go and do a microscopic analysis, though, we burn them. Of You will literally take a cut about, you know, inch by inch square, and you are going to set it on fire. Because, remember that synthetic fibers are made out of petroleum. They're made out of oil. They burn almost immediately unless they've been chemically treated. So you go through and you say, okay, does it burn? Does it instantly go out? Does the smoke smell natural? Like we'll go and you'll smell almost like burning hair for it. Is that the type of you know, test that we need in order to test for this fiber? And it works. So we'll burn quite a bit of fibers in the upcoming days. Then thermal decomposition isn't so much as like 
burning, but like imagine setting it on like a hot plate. You'll see how those fibers react. Of are they going to straighten? Are they going to curl? What exactly is going to happen? Then finally, you get in the chemical tests, and chemical tests are usually solubility and decomposition. Specifically, we find a really, really, really strong acid. I think most of the time we use hydrochloric. And you place the fiber into that hydrochloric acid, and you see how the chemical reaction occurs, or what happens to that fiber as it decomp or fiber as it decomposes. So any of these are just very, very quick easy tests for identification. Now, other things that you can do, you can go and you could test the density of it. So if you have a specific fiber, you go, you place it in all different types of materials, have different densities. So say you have asbestos as opposed to fiberglass, then you could test the density of the two. You could test the refractive index, which is how well light passes through of you shine a very, very bright light on it, you look at the changes and the difference, or fluorescence is how well it goes and it's, you know, responding to that light. What are the wavelengths of light that is reflected back upon it? Does it glow? Does it, things of that nature. But these are all tests that you can have for identification. Now, fibers, you have to make sure to package them individually. It's not like, oh, here's a fiber and here's a fiber, because again, sometimes you're gonna have a blend. You have to go and you individually pack fibers. If you do a tape lift, again, you go and remove those fibers, you fold them into the druggist fold, you put them into a pill bottle, something to go and to place them individually. But again, fibers are used all the time. Of, I think probably the most popular case is the case of Wayne Williams. Wayne Williams, if you've seen the show Mindhunter on Netflix, it's talking about criminal psychology. But Wayne Williams is a famous, famous, famous serial killer outside of Atlanta. And he was convicted of going and killing, I hate to say it, but children. And the way in which they convinced the jury that he was the actual person enough to put him away was that he went and one of the homes had carpet on it that he went to in order to, you know, commit his act of murder. But it had carpet on it. And he brought that carpet back, and it was in his car, on his shoes, of anything. Like, it's just super, super telling and super, super obvious but it is used intrinsically to place the victim, not to match the victim, if that makes sense. But that is it. That's fibers for you. I look forward to having you in the lab so that we could do it together. And just as always, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, everyone.